Amen. Good morning, family. Let us stand this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God says that David says that I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And this morning, the presence of God is the best place to be. Amen. The presence of God is home for the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. So this morning, as we're going into the presence of God, I would like for us to raise our voice this morning and bring the presence of God, invite the presence of God in this place this morning. You know what you are trusting God for this morning and you want to encounter Him this morning. So let us raise our voice to the King of Kings and invite the presence of God in this place. Amen, family. Come and let's raise our voice to the King of Kings. Father, we worship You. We glorify Your holy name, Jesus. Lord, You are the King of Kings. You are the great I Am. And there is no one who is like You, Jesus. There is no one who can be compared to who You are, Jesus. We glorify your holy name, Jesus, and we worship your holy name, Jesus. We echo the name of Jesus in this place, O oh God, as the greatest name that we have ever known, Jesus. Your name is great to save, it's mighty to heal, and it's mighty to deliver this morning, Jesus. And nothing can stand against your name or come up against your name, Jesus. And this morning, Father, your word declares, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, it's a strong tower. The righteous, they run into it and they are saved this morning. So this morning, oh God, as we are inviting your presence in this place, oh God, we ask Jesus that you will open up our hearts this morning. Open up our hearts, oh God, to receive your, to your word this morning, oh God. Open up our hearts, oh God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. To worship you in your fullness this morning for who you are and for what you have done, oh God. For what you are still going to do, Jesus. So as your presence is coming in this place, oh God, we raise our worship to you, Jesus, to the one who deserves it all and to the one who is worthy of it all. And this morning, oh God, as your presence is coming in this place, oh God, we trust that you will encounter us this morning, oh God, that you will encounter us at the altar this morning, that you will encounter us this morning. Every spirit, oh God, and it's not from you, Jesus, we break it down in the name of Jesus. And this morning we speak the name of Jesus in this place. The name of Jesus that revives every dead bone. That revives every spirit tonight. Um, this morning, Jesus. So this morning, oh God, as your spirit is coming to this place, oh God, let your name be glorified. Come on, family, just worship the King of Kings. Here on the moon 
the nations You're on the move Jesus the revivalist You're on the move You're pouring out your spirit You're on the move Come on sing Jesus the revivalist Jesus the revivalist You're on the move Sweeping through the nations You're on the move Jesus Jesus the revivalist You're on the move Pouring out your spirit You're on the move Come on sing strongholds Strongholds being broken The prodigal runs home The orphan found the father You are revival Families restored Hearts are being healed You bind our hearts together Jesus, you are revival Repentance from your people
Your glory 
Worship him now under this atmosphere. Just a moment in worship him. Lift up your hands and just worship him now. We worship you this morning, Lord. We praise you this morning. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. We bring exaltation unto your name now, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We worship your majesty this morning. Father, we declare, I want us just to worship you because this is holy ground this morning. And we lift our hands now and we create an atmosphere for him to come this morning. You have not come this morning for anybody else but for him. It's all about him this morning. So I want you to lift your hands and just close your eyes. And let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, I want you this morning, your coming is not in vain. The fact that you are here this morning is not in vain. And so utilize the time that we have to worship Him. Every eye closed, every hand lifted. There's so much that we go through on a daily basis. There's so many battles that we fight every week. And we cannot afford to come in His presence and miss the mark or miss the opportunity to encounter Him. So He has your hands shall lift it on high and every eye close. I just want you to come into the realm of the presence now. Let your spirit come in alignment with Him now. Let Him come this morning and just fill that empty place. That voidness, emptiness come be full this morning. That's every heart this morning. Those on the line touch their hearts this morning. Every empty vessel, those who are feeling empty this morning, come now and fold them this morning, Lord. Those who are feeling their hearts are shattered, hearts that are broken, come and mend their hearts now, Lord. Come and fold their hearts now. Lord, you know every heart tonight this morning, Lord. You know every heart. I pray now come in that emptiness this morning, Lord, and just fill it now with your presence. Fill it now with your presence. Disappointments turn it into joy this morning, Lord. And I declare this morning, Father, that every morning situation, Father, I declare that there come joy this morning now, Father. And I speak light in every darkness, in every situation. That's right. As you lift up your hands this morning, as you lift up your hands, just come in the realm, the realm of the worship this morning, because let him come this morning. Let him step in this morning. Come on. You cannot afford to miss the mark. You cannot afford to miss the moment. Every moment in the presence of the Lord, he wants to encounter you. Every moment in his presence, he wants to meet you this morning. So just surrender unto him, say, Lord, here I am this morning. I'm not here this morning to satisfy no one. I am not here this morning because says, I want to be here. But I need a touch from you this morning, Lord. I need an encounter from you, Lord. And I need to be healed this morning, Lord. And I pray this morning that the presence of God will come and saturate into your heart this morning. Touching every life this morning. Come on, now you start to pray in the Holy Spirit. Those of you come, open your hearts now. Make your request known unto God. Come on, say, here I am this morning, Lord. I am not here in vain. I have not come this morning for nothing, Lord. I have come this morning to encounter the living God. Come on, that's right. Make your request known. Just open your mouths. Come on, that's right. And let Him come in now in your heart. We worship you now, O oh God. We worship you now, O oh God. Full every heart. Full every heart. Full every heart this morning, Lord. We break down holes of destruction this morning. Come and fill it. Fill it this morning, Lord. 
When you surrender, He comes. When you surrender, He comes. Surrender unto Him now. Now we worship Him and we declare the majesty of God and the goodness of God. We worship You. This is right now. This is. In the realm, that's his holy hands. These yes, are holy come on, hands. Lord. We lift up holy hands this we morning. Come on, these are holy lips. These are holy hands. We're lifting up holy hands. For the Lord is present and where is His holy. Come on, these are holy hands. Up until you, Lord. Up For the Lord is present and where is his holy. Come on, we declare that we are standing on holy ground this morning. We Let us pray. Let us pray. Jesus, now for we are standing in His presence on holy ground. Come on, we declare this this morning that we. Are standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels. 
Let us pray. Let us pray. Jesus, now let us pray. Let us pray. This is my soul this 
calling many of us into rest now and the Lord said come rest in my presence and in my presence you will find a rest and I want you to surrender says the Lord this morning just close your eyes it's gonna come away because now he's calling you into his rest into the rest of the Lord. And he says, he's seen your tears. He's seen your pain. But he says, now I call you into a rest. And in my presence, you will find a rest. No more turmoil. No more worry. No more concern. But you will find a rest in my presence now. If you surrender to me, I call you to rest now, says the Lord. So lift up your hands, close your eyes now. I uplift the heavy burden from you now. And the anointing destroys every yoke now. Infirmity be broken. Bondages be destroyed now. Full operation of the anointing now. I untie you in the realm of the spirit now. From every bondage, every yoke now. I untie you from it now. The anointing is now in function and now in operation. To destroy yokes now. Bondages now. In the name of Jesus, now let the anointing operate now. Set God's people free now. There we go, bondages are destroyed now. Yokes are broken. Yokes are breaking, 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 breaking. I see the realm of the spirit, depression are breaking. Oh, bondages have been removed now. Robo sheke. Chains are falling off. Chains are falling off. I untie you in the realm of the spirit now in the name of Jesus and the anointing is now in full operation oh and now the glory of God is gonna come when you surrender he comes when you surrender he comes bondages are breaking now it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking it's breaking i set the captive free now i set the captive free now and now you'll see the glory come now I release the glory of God. I see the Lord this morning. And now you shall usher into the rest of God. I see 
Rest is here now. That's right. That's right. And now you breathe in the Holy Spirit. Because the rest of God is here now. The Lord is calling you to rest. He's here. Breathe in the atmosphere. Breathe it in this morning is here. Atmosphere is here. Atmosphere is here, it's here. become familiar with his presence. When you're hungry for him, he comes. Robo shekele rabas shekele robo bo 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 de marabas shekele robo bo 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 de la robo bo 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 de re ba 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 shokolo robo bo bo Only when there's a hunger will come. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bring full restoration to God's people. Full restoration to God's people. And I declare unto you, you shall no more live in turmoil. And you shall no longer wonder and be concerned and be dismayed. And depression has been lifted this morning. And yokes have been broken. And the Lord says, I'm setting you free this morning. By the power of God, I'm setting you free this morning. Because the Lord has come to set us free this morning. And the Bible said, whom the Son is set free or free indeed this morning. So somebody declare, I am free this morning. Say, I am free this morning. Say, I'm not under bondage. Say, but I'm under grace. And now you say, I am free this morning. Say, by the blood of the Lamb. Say, by the blood of the Lamb. No, say, by the blood of the Lamb. I am free. Say, Satan has no hold over my life. Say, Satan has lost his grip over my life now lift up your hand say i am free in the name of jesus say i am free now give god the praise this morning come on give god a better praise give god a praise hallelujah hallelujah faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god and you have to understand what you declare so shall it be are you with me as you declare so shall it be i challenge you tell the devil i am free in the name of jesus now i five three people and say i am free this morning hallelujah somebody say hallelujah Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see it for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, I want to greet everyone this morning and welcome everybody this morning. And thank you for joining us, those of you online. Thank you for joining us this morning and being with us this morning. Amen. Is it good to be in the presence of the Lord family? Hallelujah. It's good to be in His presence this morning. And I believe God for His Word this morning. Praise God. His Word brings life. Amen. Because Jesus is life. Amen. And so His Word brings life this morning. Hallelujah. And we must believe and receive the Word of God this morning. Amen. Um, it's very, very simple. As you speak, as you declare it, so shall it be. It's a very simple exercise. It's a very simple exercise. And I always say to you guys that just as you received the Lord, came out by faith, and you said, I, I surrender unto the Lord, and you have received salvation. I mean, how many of you know that you are saved? Amen. How do you know you're saved? Amen. Because you said the sinner's prayer. And when you said the sinner's prayer, you were saved. So if you believe that you are saved and you are sons and daughters of God, how much does that believe the other things? Salvation is one of the greatest gifts. So we believe God for that, but we can't believe God for the other things. You see where the, 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 the enemy comes in? It's very simple and straightforward. Are you with me? So we have to understand it comes by, by speaking and by declaring the word of the Lord. Amen. I want to speak to you a little bit this morning and I want to give you something because you have to understand this that um, I want to speak on something this morning that I wish you would ask and the Lord is saying unto many of us everybody this morning that I wish that you would ask please listen to what I'm saying to you this morning I wish that you would ask. 
The Lord saying this morning that how I wish that you would ask me. Are you with me this morning, church? Yes. It says if the Lord standing ready for us, standing ready for us, but all we have to do is ask him. Let me give you something this morning. Let me be very profound this morning. Psalm 78 verse 40 says this. Look at this. Psalm 78 verse 40 says this. Look at this. How in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Look at the word often. How often they provoke him in the wilderness. And then they do what? And then they grieved him. In other words, the Israelites, they provoked God in the desert and in the wilderness. Please pay attention to the scripture and this is what I'm about to release. You leave that scripture on. Because what I'm about to release unto you, you have to have an understanding this morning that we grieve the Holy Spirit and we grieve God. Are you with me? Look at this. So we see God has been grieved, obviously, of something. Talk to me. Interact. Come, let's have a dialogue. So we can see here, it charms says that God has been grieved by something. Let's get to the same page. Obviously, because the Bible said that often they provoked him in the wilderness and they did what? And they grieved him in the desert. So God, God has been grieved by something here. Because what happens here, they limited the Holy One of Israel. And this is where they provoked and they grieved God. They limited the Holy God and they forgot his power. I said to you now, how do you know you're saved? You confess the prayer and I'm saved. Now when the struggle, whatever comes your way, you forget the power of God. Salvation is one of the greatest, is one of the greatest things that a man can receive, if not the greatest. So here the Bible said, God is grieved. Obviously, they've done something to grieve him. What does God say? They forgot. And secondly, look at this, the Lord says, because they limited me. And they forgot my power that I've revealed to them how many times. It's like God saying to you, don't you trust me for this? Have I not showed you in the already in the past what I'm capable of? What I have done, now you grieve me for not believing this. Are you with me? If you're with me, you shout louder. We're not in a, in a corner 331 church, we're in a Pentecostal church. So work with me this morning. So we can see God has been grieved. I'm going to speak on this stone because for my throat this morning, but I want to teach you. I don't want to really preach, I'm going to teach you something. And we can see God is grieved here because they forgot the power of God and they limited God. And also they, give me a little more volume, and also they forgot what God has done for them. Amen? And because they limited the Holy One of Israel and they, for, they did not remember the power He had. In other words, the day that He had redeemed them from the enemy. They forgot about that. The day that the Lord redeemed them from the enemy. So now they grieve the Holy Spirit for not believing, but they forgot the day that the Lord delivered them from the enemy. How quickly can you forget about the power of God? Amen? And so they grieve the Lord. So let me speak about, about asking God and asking God for big things because I spoke to the sons last night and I said to them, listen here, our society and our generation, and you better listen to me very carefully. Don't go with my voices. I'm speaking to you this morning if i can say that our society has been indoctrinated with unbelief 
And we believe that we will not receive that, we will not be that, we will not accomplish that. This is too impossible, that will never happen. That has been in our society's mind. And I said, now what the Lord wants to do, He wants to bring the church out of that spirit. And He wants to take you into the promised land. And what we don't understand is this. When we enter the promised land, we have to have an understanding what to do now. I said last night, look at this. We're taking back territory. God is giving the territory. What now? You wanted the territory, so what now? You have to have an understanding what to do with the territory. The promised land is there for them, but they have to have an understanding what to do with the promised land. Let me give you this. A, how can I say this? It's a mentality, it's a mentality thing, because why I say this to you? Many people will, will have this in their mind, and this is how we speak, many people speak. If the Lord gives me three million rand, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll do that. Here's the thing. When you have no vision, it's not going to come for you. And let me put this with all due respect. Putting million rands in a person, I want to use this term, that doesn't know how to steward money, in a person that has got, that comes from, and that are still not living, but mentally are in a poverty mindset. I'm not saying living, I'm saying mentally. Because if you're mentally in a poverty mindset, so that millions are going to fall through your hands like nothing. Because you don't know how to operate with it. Because your mind are not set out to operate with that millions. Are you understanding? Because here's the thing, the first thing I'll generate, I'm going to buy me a car, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, and I'm done. Come on, don't sleep on me, keep awake, keep awake. So look at this. What do we do when we've seen in the newspaper when people won the lotto? In a month, a year, two years time, they bankrupt. They don't know how to operate with the money. So you wanted the millions, now you have the millions, now you don't know what to do with the millions. We see how people have pension fund payouts of a lot of money, three, four months, of a year, it's gone. You wanted the millions, but you don't know how to operate the millions. Here's the key. The mind has to be changed before that comes. Because if that money comes, it's going to fall through your hands. Because you don't know how to use it. So do you understand? Society has to be, be has to, mind has to be renewed in the sense of what to do. And I said this last night, if you place million rands in a, in a billionaire or in, a, in a, a millionaire's hands, he knows what to do with it. And you will get millionaires and billionaires that drives ordinary cars. Because they know what to do with money. They don't splash money and flush money and just waste money. They know how to operate with money. I'm not going to teach, but I want to teach you something. Because here's the key, they know how to invest money and here's the key, they know how that money will work for them. So the generation of today take the money and they splash it all at once. And three, four months, a year down the line, they bankrupt again. I said last night, you earn 7,000 rand, you don't know how to manage 7,000 rand. And you say to the Lord, if you give me 70,000 rand, I'll know what to do. Listen, if you don't know how to manage 7,000 rand, you will not know how to manage 70,000 rand. Because from 7,000 rand, your lifestyle will go immediately to a 70,000 rand. The 70,000 rand will become a 7,000 rand for you again. Look at this. 7,000 rand, in the, in, the, in the norm for many of our people that have got this mindset, in the first week, in the second week, the money is up. Can't come out with 7,000. Now you get 70,000 rand. Now your lifestyle increase. You never had 20 things on the list now, but now you have 20 things on the list because I've got a 70,000 rand salary. So now by the end of the day, if you earn the 70,000 rand salary on day three, it's also zero, zero. Because now your whole lifestyle, everything has climax. 
If we don't understand the principle how to deal with things, we're not going to get out of it. You can put millions in people's hands, it will fall through the cracks if people don't know how to manage it. So we have to understand that in this way, this is where I feel the church has to go into. And that is why I'm bringing men in here in May that will speak about economical freedom and about finance and things like that. Why? We've got the territory. So how are we going to operate now? Oh, you wanted the business? So you got the business, now what are you going to do now? I don't know how to operate the business. If you don't know how to operate the business, you're going to lose the business. So we have to be taught. Understand, it's good to want to have things, but you have to understand first. In other words, let me put it in plain, simple words. I don't know where I'm going here, but let me put it in plain, simple words. You want a car, but you can't drive, first of all. Secondly, you want a car, but you don't attempt to go for learners. You don't attempt to go for driver's license. You don't attempt to go for lessons. Here's the other thing. You want the car, now the car stands in the garage. The car was not made to stand in the garage. So in order for you to want the car, you have to do the necessary, get the learners, get the driver's license, get lessons. So now, Lord, I'm ready. You want the job? You're 50 years old and you don't even have an ID yet. Do the basics. Get the ID. What company is going to employ you without the ID? I want the job, Pastor. Where's your ID? Come on, are you seeing what I'm trying to say? So we have to get in the reality of this. I want the car, I want the car. What are you doing to get the car? Hey? Eh? You have to set vision in place to achieve it. I want to teach you something because here's what I feel the whole time. We want territory and we've got territory. What are we doing now? We have to know how to occupy the territory. The Lord says he's given it unto us. He promised it unto us. But now you have to know how to occupy it. Amen. So we have to get the basics. And that's where the lack comes in. And I, the church has to be trained about this. Has to be developed about this. And the church don't want to hear this. Because the first thing I said it last night. Come on you young people. I said it last night. How do you buy yourself a golf eight? And you live by your mother. How do you buy yourself a golf eight and you live in a, in a hockey or somewhere else? How do you buy that? Come on, be realistic. I want a golf eight, but I don't even have a house of my own. Where's a golf eight going to park? Steps have to be taken right. Are you with me? So we have to get the system right, because otherwise we're going to lose out. And now I spend a lot of money on a Golf 8. And a Golf 8 is pricey. Anything from seven, eight hundred thousand rand. And in a few months, a Golf 8 has got scratches. The Golf 8 is not, the value has dropped. All the money is gone. Turn the flip of the coin, take the money, buy you a house. Great investment. Now the Golf 8 can come. I've got a garage now. We have to get the system right. Because I think that the today's generation think very wrong. Are you with me? We want things, but when we get things, we don't know how to manage things. That is why many people don't know how to look after jobs. Because they don't learn the value and appreciation of having a job. Do you understand? You, and that's why I say as parents and as young people, you have to be taught. When you go into the corporate world, it's a different world. You understand? You have to be tough and you have to be, go through that pressure, but you have to work. In order to be getting married, in order to have a family, in order to have a home, you have to work. Which means you have to sit with that nonsense of people every day at work, how people go under the work, you have to deal with that. You can't just leave every job tomorrow because Peter or Sarah was rude. No, you have to be tough. Man up. Do you understand? And today's generation, no, mommy, this is not for me, no, this is not for me. This is not. You know why a lot of generation does this? Because they always have a back foot to stand on. Mom's house is there, dad's house is there, family's house is there. i got a back foot to stand on. If you don't have a back foot to stand on, you'll work whatever job comes to you. And the people of the day must be, they must be taught these things, our younger generation. 
Because you have to come in alignment with the world system and also knowing how to deal with things. Are you with me? So they forgot about what God has done for them. But I want to say something that we want things from God and God will give it to us. But we also have to be capable of, 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 of um, being able to manage it. Let me make a simple example. You want to get married. You have to know how to treat a lady. You have to know how to treat a husband. You have to know how to, to, to do marriage. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I've, I feel that the generation of today have to step into that teachings and to that boundaries. That they understand life situation. Are you with me, family? So we want to look at this. So I want us to go away from being having small prayers, but ask God for big prayers. Amen. So I want to stir your faith today to believe for something beyond that what you think that is possible. Are you with me? I want you to think and believe for some things that is beyond what looks possible. Because we say we serve the God of the impossibilities. So if we serve the God of the impossibilities, what's happening? So we have to ask God for the things that are looking impossible. Are you with me? And so listen, family, I want to take the limits. God says, I want to take the limits off. Take the limits off me. You know what the problem is? We've got too many limits on God. We say he's a limitless God, but we place a lot of limits on God. God cannot do that for me. God cannot give that for me. God will not do that for me. God will not. Pro we put limits on God. And when we put limits on God, God cannot answer. How often they provoked him in the wilderness. And they did what? And they grieved him. In other words, they said to God that God cannot do this for them. But they forgot about the power that God has done for them, how God has brought them out. You see how easily we forget. So we have to take the limits off this morning because the limits must be taken off this morning. Amen. So I want to preach a little bit on that and I want to understand that we have to take the limits off. And I want us to understand that we have the, the same problem today that they had. Just as they provoked God and grieved God, it's the same spirit today. The church and the people are still provoking God and still grieving God. How do you provoke him? You don't believe. How do you provoke him? You put a limit on him. So you grieve him. In other words, you tell him, God, you will not be able to do this. Are you here? Are your legs tired? We can stand. So we have to understand this. Because I'm, I'm speaking, my voice is going nowhere. They provoked him because they told him you cannot do this. And they grieved him. And that's the same spirit today. Why do we care? Why do we carry so many crosses? Because we don't want to surrender those crosses to God. Why do we carry so many burdens? And that's why I felt the anointing will want to destroy yokes this morning. Why do we carry so many burdens? Because we, can't, we don't want to submit that burdens to God. Because we believe that God cannot resolve that burdens for us. Do you see how we limit God? And how we provoke Him and how we grieve Him? Are you with me? So the same spirit that operated at that time operates today still. And we have seen how God opened the Red Sea for them. And we have seen how God provided manna for them. And we have seen how God had clothed them for 40 years. <laughs> In other words, God clothed them for 40 years. God opened the Red Sea for them. God provided manna from heaven. As a matter of fact, Akon was given that time already. There came a cloud by day, the Akon came by day. When they got cold during the day, they came a heater by day. It has only come now, it was that time already. God gave them a fire by night. But yet they still provoked him. And yet they still said to him that you can't do this for him. They forgot all those stuff. They threw it out by the window and said, look, God cannot do with this. And they grieved the Holy Spirit because we easily forget what the Lord has done for us. Amen. In other words, everything God has done for them was supernatural. 
Open the Red Sea. Manna from heaven. Clothed, clothes that never worn out. I'm telling you, I don't know where you buy today. Leave Belleville. Those clothes never worn out. They wear it for 40 years. You understand the power of that? Aircon by day for them. A heater by night for them. Are oh, you understand that church? So they forgot about all those stuff, the supernatural stuff that God did for them. And they provoked God and they grieved Him. And the Bible said that they begin to limit, look at this, the same God. They begin to limit the same God. Not a different God, the same God. Because they forgot what God has done for them. And they begin to limit the same God. Amen. So we have to understand this. Notice how powerful this is. Notice the strong word that God says here. And they grieved him in the desert. Look at the strong word the Lord used here. They grieved me in the desert. Because they forgot about everything I've done for them. Amen. So we have to understand this this morning. And why was he grieved and provoked? Because they limited him. And they did not give him the privilege to do everything that he wanted to do for them. The church and the people and us of today, we don't allow God and we don't give him the privilege to do everything that he wants to do for us. We limit the privileges of God. We are privileged to be sons and daughters of God, but we limit the privileges that God wants to give us. In other words, certain things we'll take, certain things we don't believe. So the church are limiting the privileges of God. Are you with me? And they limited him. Listen, God was not limited in his ability. God was not limited in his ability. You better hear me now. God was and not today even are limited in his ability. Hear me. God was and are not limited in his ability. He cannot be limited. Then and now he couldn't be limited. Here's the problem. They limited God. He was not limited. They limited God. Just as a church today, we are limiting God. God is not limited. He has no, he doesn't have the ability to be limited. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We as a church limit God. There's nothing that he cannot do. There's no ability of limitation in him. We place a limitation upon him. Oh, are you hearing me, church? Some of you must go sleep earlier Sunday, Saturdays. I'm, I'm going to do this now. When you sleep on me, I'm going to stand still. And I'm going to point the camera at you. You'll see now. So look at this. They limited God. God is not, God, God is not limit in him. He's not, he's not able to be limited. We limit God. Oh, my word. And how do you limit God? By unbelief. The only way you are limiting God is by unbelief. Because unbelief comes in. Look at Matthew 23, verse 37 says. Matthew 23, verse 37 says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stones them which are sent unto thee. Mm. How often, look at this now, I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. And look at this last four words. And he would not. And he would not. Not. And the people of today 
don't want to. And the generation of today don't want to. God says, I want to cover you as a hen covers his chickens, but he would not. Are you hearing me, church? The Lord wants to do it, but he would not. In other words, we telling God, God, don't do it. We telling God that cannot happen. And the Lord says, I want to do it even as a hen gathered the chickens under her wings, and he would not. In other words, the Lord says, I want to protect you. You send the prophets away, I want to provide for you. But look at the last four words, and he would not. Do you understand? So in other words, the Lord wish that we could ask him. She says, I am, that's right. But we would not. If you listen, the word will change your perception this morning. Are you with me? And look at the King James Version and says, I would have, and he would not. The King James Version said, look at what God says, I would have, and he would not. That's very powerful. In other words, the Lord says, I would have taken care of you, but you would not have me taken care of you. God is respectful. I told you, I told you on the wall, you have your own will. God says, I would have taken care of you. I would have provided for you, but you would not let me take care of you. Come on. He would, we would not. Are you here? So we see that God wants to provide, but we don't want him to provide. And the Bible says, look at this. Think about the unlimited power of God. He says, I would have, but he would not. Somebody say, unlimited. This is the unlimited power of God. That he would have, and that he wants to, but we don't want him to. And God will not force himself. Are you hearing me? That's why I say, how can you believe that you are saved and you can't believe God for other things? Look at 1 Corinthians 2 verse 19, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, but as it is written, look at this. I have not seen, no ear has heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. Look at this. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. How many love God? How many love God? So if you love God, why isn't it? Why, why is this not taking place? Because he said, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard, neither does a man know what God has in store for them that love him. Look at this. What the eye has not seen, cars, homes, provision, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not even heard on earth, God has in store for them that love him. I'll ask you again, and don't raise your hand, but check your faith. Do you love him? Because if you love him, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard. Are you with me, church? In other words, God is standing ready. <laughs> I said to the sons, Lord, I look at this. I said, listen, the church must sit under teachings like this. You have to, don't worry about hyper grace and hyper speaking and hyper preaching. Be taught. Please listen. Jesus taught them. 
The Bible said numerous times he teach them. That's why they called him teacher, rabbi, master. And by teaching him, he simply speaks softer than what I'm speaking. And they believed and it happened. When you are open to receive, it will enlarge your mind. And that's where I'm going in the current weeks. Because Jabez' territory has to be enlarged. Your mind has to be enlarged. I need to take you out of your current situation and your current comfort and place into the destiny and the purpose where God wants you. Because too many of us are, are in our comfort position. And too many of us are satisfied where we are and believe that is where it is. And if you look at the declarations that we've done for the last couple of weeks, you'll see where we're going. Are you with me, church? So the Bible says, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard, neither does a man know, or in the heart of the man, the things that God, look at that, the things. <laughs> what is the things? <laughs> mm. I'll grab all of your blessings. I'm very serious. Because I believe in God. Things that have not been seen yet. It's coming. Because I love him. You understand the power of that? Say, faith cometh by hearing. Are you with me? When you hear the word of the Lord, faith comes. But how is this going to happen? This isn't a book. How is this going to happen? No, no, no. That's where faith steps in. <laughs> Oh, here he opens. Listen, I wish I had a rope for you. I throw out, wake that lady up there, please. Don't sleep on me, sister. Don't sleep on me. I wish I had a rope here for you. Because I throw your rope out. Your decision if you want to pull it and get out of the water or you want to drown. That's how it is. You are in a fire. It's a lifeline. It's your decision. Do you understand where I'm going? Yeah. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Oh, my God. And now the enemy is, 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 is um, closing us not to receive the word. Because he knows one word gives a revelation. Yeah. One word brings vision. Come on. Say, I want to be taught the word of God. Now, listen what I'm saying to you. So let me, uh, let me give you this, and uh, let me add those who are limiting him. Let me add those, this scripture. In other words, if we still limit God, let me give you this. Ephesians 3 verse 20, look at this. And the Bible says, now unto him. Mm. Now unto him. Come on, guys. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now unto him, you guys have to flow. Exceeding, abundantly. Above all that we ask or think. Look at this. According to the power that worketh in us. Hey. He wants to give it to us. All that we ask, look at this, or even think. According to the power that worked in us. Shay. In other words, he's the God of the abundance. Mm. In other words, don't limit God. Tell your neighbor, don't limit God. Listen, this morning I want to say, we must no longer limit God. It's time we turn him loose. Because we are bounding him. We are limiting him. In other words, I say, Lord, have your way. I'm open from today onwards. Are you hearing me? In other words, if I've limited you there, if I limited you in my house, if I limited you in my finances, if I limit you there, I take it off. I take it off, yes, son. I take it off. Come on. 
because now I'm surrendering to God. I believe God now. This morning, you're going to see what we're going to pray for. Because you better think very carefully what I'm going to do at the end of this word now. Before you pray, you're going to take your mind to everything that limits you. And you're going to untie it. And you're going to declare, I untie that that I've limited. Whatever I limit, I cannot receive that, I untie it. Whatever I limit, I cannot be healed, I untie that. Whatever I limit, I cannot get that, I untie it. You have to take off every limitation this morning. And say, Lord, now you step in. Are you understanding me? Because God is not able to be limited. We limit God. So we have placed a limit there for that I believe. We place a limit there that I believe. We take it off. Somebody say, take it off. So we have to understand the importance of this this morning. So we take, we're going to no longer limit him, but we're going to believe God for everything. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. So it's time to let him be loose and be God. Amen? Because we have to understand the power of this. That God says, I am not <laughs> able to be limited. Nowhere in the Bible says I am limited. They limited me. You limited me. We limited him. Are you with me, church? We limited him. Come on, I challenge you. Stand on your feet for a moment. Lift up your hands. Stand on your feet for a moment. Say, I'm letting God loose. Come on, say, I'm letting God loose. Let him do what he wants to do in my life. Say again, sir, I'm letting God loose. Let him do what he wants to do in my life. Now, now give him praise for that. Come on, sit man. We have to take the limitations off. In other words, the days of little praise, we have to take it off. Amen. So we're going to pray big things this morning. We take off the limitations and we take off the restrictions. So listen, if we say God is a sovereign, God, so he can do what he wants to do with who he wants to do it. How many, how many times we say, I'm available to you, Lord? <laughs> Are we? <laughs> we have to be very careful. And so listen, he does not have to ask anybody's permission to do anything. He's standing right. It's when we allow him to do it. Are you with me doing this? Let me give you this. In other words, I believe in the power of sovereignty. Because God is a sovereign God. Amen. And this is what he has. He has much more in store for us. Amen. Let me take you back. What the eye has not seen. You're not hearing what the scripture says. What the eye has not seen. <laughs> it's not seen yet. This movie must still come out. Oh my God, Lord, help me. What the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard. Oh, this is so powerful. Are you getting this? In other words, we take the limits off. So I, I said, listen, imagine this because this is, this is where I want to come. You have three billionaires sitting here, sitting, sitting in, a, in a boardroom. You have Elon Musk. I mean, no, he's a rich man. You have, a, um, what is his name? Bill Gates, he's a rich man. You have Warren Buffett, he's a rich man. You have these men sitting in the room, they billionaires. They give you the opportunity to come and pitch for them. Tell them what you want. They said, listen, we're ready. We want to hear what you want. <laughs> now, these men are talking millions and billions. What are our pros going to be when we enter a room like that? Please don't come with fiber and data, please. Your mindset has to be big now. You're sitting now in the presence of billionaires. 
These men say we are ready to listen what you want and we are ready to grant it for you. If your mind is as far as this a house or a thousand rand or five hundred rand or even maybe a couple of hundred thousand rands, then your mind is still small. Because these men are not talking small figures. These men want to invest now. They want to give you what you need now. But they want to hear what you want. Do you understand what I mean? Because for them, you're going to waste the time. Coming to them for a pay my, my debt off and buy me this car from 800,000 or whatever. That's small for them. You're wasting their time. They want to hear a vision. Okay, I want to put up this hospital. I want to do this business mall. I want to open the shopping center. I want to build this. They want to see big things now. Now you're talking. But if our minds are not there, we cannot talk that language. If we enter a room like that and our mind is small, then we're not thinking there yet. They are gathered by the grace of God. God is the creator. When we go to him, he's ready to hear what we want from him. We don't come to him with small things. We come to him with big things. Are you hearing me this morning? The minds have to be stretched. Because you don't go in the presence of great men for small things. When you go to God, you ask for God for big things. Because he's got all the resources. How many believe that, church? So we have to understand. So family, we have to go to our heavenly father. The Bible said he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He's so mighty, he owns everything. I want us to shift our mindset this morning. And here is the thing. We bind God with our small feet. We bind God with our little dreams. And we bind God with small expectations. Because when we go to him, we go with small things to him. I said last night, the sun's... Things in the last couple of weeks, things started to just go open in my in my in my in my mind, because every word I get is, is just enlargement. Because hear me now, hear me now. I have to understand the God I'm serving. If we don't understand the God that we're serving, then we don't know who we approach. Are you hearing me? Hear me today. I prophesy and I declare this over your life. If your mind shifts this morning, things will come quicker than what it was supposed to come. I'm giving you a life source here now. What happened now? Because now I'm giving you the man who are capable and able to supply your need now. Because you have gone to the wrong method and things. Now when you know he owns everything, now you know you can ask him. Are you with me, church? He is the unlimited God. So we have to stretch our mindset this morning. So I must stretch my vision. In other words, Jay said that it is time to get a fresh vision. Come on, bigger dreams. Expand and ask for greater things. Come on, come on. Expand the vision. Ask for greater things, ask for bigger things. He's your father. We say he's our father. And so listen, we must be free. Amen? Amen? We must free the Lord in this hour. Why am I saying this? It sounds very strange. From ourselves. Because we place a limit on him. The Lord says, I would have love to do it for you. But he would not want me to do it. Please pay attention. So I'm standing ready to do it for you. But you would not let me do it for you. How can God says you would want to do it for us if he's not capable of doing everything for us? He doesn't say certain, certain things. He said things. 
He doesn't say, listen, the, land, the line is drawn, the only that you can get. No, no. He said, things. Which means it's open. And then he says, what the eye has not seen yet. What the ear has not heard yet. Do we, for, do we understand the revelation of this? How big this is this morning. I need to take your minds out of this thing. Your mind must be changed. Are you with me? And so God wants to do it. In other words, we have to take the limits off him, praise God. And if we would not limit him, I believe he will do supernatural things for us. If we not limit him. And the Bible says, he was grieved. Why was he grieved? Because they limited him. And they did not let him do all that he planned and do for them all the time. God is so much more. Come on. He's like a father. He's not like a father. He's a father. A father only wants to do the best for his child. A father has desires to buy the child this, to do this. Come on. A father wants to do it. A father would love to do it. Are we seeing this? He wants to do it. Oh, my word. So in other words, we have to understand this. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6. Uh, the Bible says, look at this. Look at this one word here. Never the less. Look at this. He is the nevertheless God. I'm going to from now on sing nothing. I'm going to teach you the word. Amen. I need to teach you the word. He's the. Break that word down. He's the never the less. He's the never the less God. Nothing stops by him. Nothing gets depleted by him. Nothing, nothing ends by him. The resources does not stop. The supply does not stop. He is the never, the less God. Nothing stops by him. It keeps on multiplying. Wow. Can we understand who God is? He's the never, the less God. Look at this, the Bible says, in other words, he is a nevertheless God. He is always the more. And when you understand that he will always have more than what he has less. Because he's the nevertheless God. And as a matter of fact, listen to it, listen how powerful he is. His grace is more than your sin. Three people, God. That's how nevertheless he is. <laughs> Look at that son. That's powerful. His grace is more than your sin. Now that you talk about your sin, listen, his grace is much more than that. Oh. In other words, he has more power than your problems. <laughs> Are you hearing the God we serve? Listen, his mercies are more than your mistakes. He is the never, the less God. In other words, you always have more 
loving him than it. Come on, come on. He's the nevertheless. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. He made all the term. In other words, he will always have more supply than you need. He will always have more supply than you need. I'm told you the supply does not run, oh, does not run empty. <laughs> He's God. He supplies everyone. And the supply does not get depleted. He gives you, he gives me, he gives that one. Do you know who you serve? I must take all of you to heaven. Next week we go to heaven. You have to go see what you have there. Are you ready? You have a week to get ready. You better pray and get yourself right. As a matter of fact, Lord, send angels and take them to heaven. Sow them heaven's gates. Take them up there for a minute or two. Let them see what you have. Are you with me? Are you ready to go to heaven? From Bangtana. Now look at this. In other words, are you with me, church? You will always have more forgiveness than our failure. You will always have more forgiveness than our failure. He's the never the less God. In other words, he's the never the less God. He will always have more. Stop limiting him. Stop limiting him by not asking. Stop limiting him by not asking. The reason why we are where we are is because we have not asked. Please listen, church. The Bible said you have not received because you have not asked me. And the reason why we are where we are because we have not asked him. And he says, ask and you will receive. And then he says, well, we know it so very well. Knock. The doors will be open. He says it, ask of me. How I wish. Please wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm going to get you stand up here. How I wish you would ask me. Put yourself in the natural, I'm a father. My son, my daughter, they need something. How I wish they must ask to receive it. The father knows you had need of something. How we wish you would. You know why we in the predicaments that you are on? Because the devil sucks us from this. And we allow the devil to suck us. And we sit in meetings like this and we don't take the word also. Because the devil sucks your mind and he wants to suck your mind. And he wants to keep you in a box. You better hear me. My God is not placed in a box. He wants you to place him in a box. He's not playing that. That's why I say take the limit of God. We have placed limits on God. God cannot do this for me. God, no, no, no. You have not asked. And he says, how I wish you would ask me. Look at what the Bible it says this. He wants to do it for them, but they would not let him do it. Do we understand this? The quicker we have the revelation and understanding of this, the quicker we're going to pass the paper. Let me talk with that terms. You studied that paragraph, come on. You studied that book, you studied that. When you get that, you get the marks for that. The quicker you understand that paper and what you must study, the quicker you're going to get the mark. Come on, let me talk simple language. Are you with me? Because I understand now what I have to study. I understand what the study says to me. So now I can go. When you understand the word of God, as quickly exists. Remind me that 28, I must take a lot through the baptism again here. The devil wants to keep you in a box. 
I see that you're this one. He wants to limit your mind. And that's why I say our society, this mind must be changed. Pastor, I want money and I want this and I want that and I want that. What are you going to do when you have it? Here's a society's problem. When you have what you ask for, you don't do what you've asked for. When you get what you've asked for, you don't do what you ask for. Because now you do 10,000 other things that you should have been done. You have to get out of that realm, son. Come on. You have to get out of that realm. Are you with me? You have to understand the power of this. So we have to understand this because the devil wants to place you in a limitation box. And he tells you now, thank you my sister, he tells you now you limit God. God will do that for you, but God will not do that for you. The Bible says I will do things for you. Somebody said things. There's not certain things, it's things. And what I love about it, the Bible says, listen, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard, neither does a man know what God has in store for him. His heart has never known. You see, where the church is going to go and where the church will go. When you get a revelation, you will shout, you will jump, you will clap, even run, because you got it. You have to, you have to. <laughs> That's how you knock the devil out of his socks. That's why I said to you, when you know the devil has got no hold over you, 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 you like stick. You stick. You had a lot of steak liquors now, whatever. But you steak now. Because now you know the devil has got... For the, all the years, the people said, I must be scared of the devil. But now I just learned this morning, the devil can do me nothing. Now I'm scared. That's how you must get the revelation. Which means Satan, you for all the years, my mother and my parents, everybody told me I cannot do this. But now I understand. Listen, you can do nothing to me now. So you have to have that type of revelation and understanding. The church must get there. Because when you get there, the devil has no hold over your life. Come on. And now we place in the box. The church must get there. The church must get there. Are you working with church? And so listen, we have to understand he's a nevertheless God. So we will stop limiting. Can I give you something? <laughs> His budget never runs dry. What are you talking about when you talk to God about the budget? That budget of God never runs dry. He's the limitless God. If it's millions, if it's what you... He never runs dry. The earth is the Lord's. We have to understand that. That my father owns everything. And I want you from the day when you approach him, you approach him knowing who he is. Knowing what he has, knowing what he wants to do for us. And this is the thing, we will allow him to do it for us. Let me give you this, I'm closing now almost. Luke 1 verse 37. Can I challenge you? Stand on your feet for a moment. Come on, I want to see some bold believers. I'll pull you out of the I'll pull you out in this house also. Because that spirit will not rob you for the rest of your life. Lift up your hands now. Say with me this. Look at the scripture. Say it loud. Come on. No, 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 no. That's when you're scared for the devil. No, 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 no. I'll count you down. I'll count you down because here's the thing. I want you to get a revelation. And I want you to know this this morning. Lift up your hands. Look at the board. I'll count you down. 
and you're going to say it today, believing it. One, two, three. Say that again. Forward God, nothing shall be impossible. Now you say forward God, nothing shall be impossible for me. Go. Forward God, nothing shall be impossible for me. Say that again. Forward God, nothing shall be impossible. Say that again. Forward God, nothing shall be impossible. One more time, say it. Now give God the praise. <laughs> Sit for a moment. Why I made you do that? Because here's the thing. If you don't say the confession prayer, then you're not saved. Come on, three people are getting here. If you don't say the confess and pray, you're not saved. If you don't declare this, you don't believe it. By declaring it, I believe it. If it's one thing you walk out of this place today, you declare for with God, nothing is impossible for me. You believe that. It's not Julian that said it. It's the word of the Lord. God says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. In other words, no challenges is too great. Are you hearing me? Listen to me now. No devil is too big. Now do we limit him? We limit him by being prayerlessness. We don't ask. Look what he says here in John 16 verse 24. John 16 verse 24, look at this. And until now, And until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Look at the board, sir. Jesus said, this is in John. Jesus said, for until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Look at what he says now. Ask and you will receive look at this that your joy may be full, full. you want to live a life of joy ask him you want you to come through for you now come on let's be real i don't want your hand on nothing you you answer it yourself keep flowing we have not received because we have not asked him yet. That's why I say, take the limits off him this morning. <sighs> it does not matter how many years you are and were in that situation, it's changing for you this morning. Because this morning the Lord said, you have not received because you have not asked me. I remind you now, says the Lord, ask of me how I wish you would ask me. Because if you ask me, I will do it for you. He said, I want to do it for you, but I wish you would ask me. Get out of my situation, ask me. Change my things around, my circumstances, ask me. Get me out of my home situation, ask me. Restore my life, ask me. The Bible in the prophet Zechariah said, listen, nothing is too hard or difficult for the Lord. You want to become a doctor, you want to be injured, you want to go to university, you want to get a bursary, you want to get this thing, ask of I want to relocate. I want to live out of get out of the I don't want to live. Get ask of me. I want things to turn in my home around. You have not received because you have not asked me. 
That's why I say we've limited him at places. And we have to take the limits of him. He said, I want to answer you. But you limit me this morning. And Jesus said, you have not received because you have not asked me. Are you hearing me, church? And the Lord said, the reason you have not received is because you have not asked me. And look at what the Bible says, up until now you have not asked me. In other words, you think about your problems. You talk about your problems, but you don't ask me. We think about our problems. We talk about our problems, but we don't ask him. We go to everybody talking about our problems, but we don't ask him. You have to know this morning is your father. Stop running around with your problems. Stop running to everybody, but you don't ask him. Let him be your first contact. In other words, up until now you have not asked me because you think about your problems and you don't ask me. In other words, look at this. Some don't sleep and some worry. Some, some twist. And that's why I prayed for that, that the anointing destroy that yoke. Turmoil. Destroy that bondage. Destroy that. Because you have not asked me. Why lay in the evening sleepless nights? Worry. Why lay in the evening turmoil? Concern. You have not asked me. Listen, if you worried about anything, it's because you have not asked him for that. You cannot be worrying for nothing. What brought worry upon you? Let me ask you this what, about what are you worrying? Whatever you worrying about, you have not asked him. Whatever you are not sleeping in the evening about, you have not asked him. And he said, you have not asked me. And that's why you have not received me. You don't need medication to fall asleep. You don't need sleeping tablets. Ask of him. I told you how I wish you would ask him. And he said, you are limiting me. And when you don't ask, you're limiting me. And the fact that he says, ask. And you will receive that your joy will be fulfilled. He said, I want my people to be happy. I want my people to be blessed. And I want my people to be full. Look at that full at the bottom there. In other words, the benefit of the cross that you are worrying about was purchased already. The benefit of the cross, what we are worrying about was purchased already. He paid it already, but you will ask you, what are you worrying about? Don't you know I've paid that for you on the cross? Everything you are not sleeping and worrying, I have paid that for you on the cross. It's yours. But the devil don't want us to know that and he's placing us limited God. He's redeemed us. He's done it. And he says, you did not ask small. Don't ask small only. And here's a matter of fact, I challenge you this morning, don't just ask what you need. Go above that. Come on, go above that. Go above that. Go above that. In the name of Jesus, go above that. Come on, go above that. He is the limitless God. So you go above that, amen. Because here's the thing. If you want a little... He'll give you a little. Amen? So he wants to give you much more. It's how and what you ask. You have limited me by asking. And he says you must ask. Ask and it shall be added to you and it shall multiply. Amen? It shall overflow the Lord says. Ask him, don't limit the God of Israel. In other words, ask him for miracles. I'm going to close in this. Stop limiting the God of Israel. Stop limiting the God of Israel. Don't make the same mistakes as they made. In other words, we have to ask ourselves, I wonder what, how much are we living out 
because we do not ask. Ask yourself this. I wonder with how much do I live out or living out because I haven't asked him. In other words, how much am I missing out because I didn't ask him? There's so many things that we missed out because we haven't asked him. We have to untie the limits this morning. Things must change for us. We must change for us. Are you hearing me, church? I'll give you the scripture. Matthew 7 verse 11 says, If you, look at this, If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him if the fathers in our society that does evil knows to give good gifts to our children how much more will he do and what is the last words on that sentence ask him somebody say ask him in other words look at that word there's three words I want to highlight in that sentence. Look at that. He said, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts? Look at that three words. How much more? More than what the earthly Father can give you. More what the biological Father can give you. How much more? Somebody say, how much more? And I think this is a problem. There's two things we limit God. We don't ask Him, and we've got a wrong perception. Because we think if we ask God, it's not going to happen for us. We limit Him. Are you with me, church? So we have to understand this. Mm. Let me give you this. Let me give you something quickly. Here. I'm going to close. I'm going to read this last scripture with them in the close team. Get ready. We're going to worship and we're going to pray. Mark 6, verse 5 says, Look at this. You only hear the word of God? Mark 6 verse 5 says, look at this. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Verse 6. He was amazed at their lack of faith. What Jesus says, in his own town, he couldn't perform miracles there. Because there they did not acknowledge him. Are you hearing me? In his own town he couldn't do it. But look at this. That's why I say to you. <laughs> healing is the bread of life. Look at what verse 6 says. He was amazed at the lack of faith. But look at verse 5. He could not do any miracles there in his own hometown, except he laid hands on a few sick people. And look at that. And they were healed. Now look at this, what I want to tell you, son. <laughs> Please, pay attention. Healing was not just supernatural. It was a norm for him. It was a norm. In our society today, when we see healing take place, it's supernatural. It's supernatural, but it was a norm for him. It is norm for him. And it's norm in the house of God that people must be healed. But look at verse 6. He said, look at that. He was actually amazed at a lack of faith. Because they didn't welcome him. 
In other words, by his spoken word and laying hands, they were healed. Healing is a bread. He wants to heal. Are you hearing me, church? He wants to heal. And he could not do any mighty works in his own hometown. They limited him there. But he wanted to do this. Look at this. He wanted to do this in his hometown. Please pay attention. I'm closing. He wanted to do this in his hometown, but they didn't allow him. The Bible said, look at that. A few he could lay hands on. The rest didn't want him there. What occurs here is occurring in the house of the Lord. In other words, he could not do mighty works in his own hometown. They limited him. But what we understand this morning is he wanted to do this in his hometown. What does his hometown represent? It's his church. He wants to do this in his church. He wants to heal. He wants to set free. But if he's not recognized in his own hometown, it cannot happen. And some said here, some online might not recognize him. And it will not happen. And that's why Jesus said, but a few I could lay their hands on. And it says in verse 6, look at this. I was so amazed by the lack of faith that they had in me. In other words, I was there, but I had no faith in me. This day will be written on, will be made note that I was there, but we did not believe him because we never asked him. Are you with me this morning, church? And we have to understand this because I want to I want to increase your faith. He said, but you have not asked me. Psalm seventy-eight, verse forty-one. And the throne in the TBT it says, look at this. Again and again. They limited God. Preventing him from blessing them. Look at this. Continually they turned they back from him. And they provoked the Holy One of Israel. How many times we turn our back? And He wants to help us. So let me ask you this this morning. Let's stand on our feet. And I want you to lift your eyes, and lift your hands, and close your eyes this morning. Because the next 10 minutes will change your life. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. So I believe God will touch and come through for you. And let me ask you this this morning. This is very important. We will ask God for big things. We are not going to live on the basics. Are you hearing me? Look at me. We are not going to live on the basics. Look at me, please. We are not going to live on the basics. Out by the door with this thing this morning. That we, that we prophesy and declare from the hand to the mouth. Out by the door. Out by the door. Because that mentality must change. Out by the door. From the hand to the mouth. We will not prophesy that... We take the limits of it this morning. That's why I say our society, our mind must change. Are you hearing me? And so we're gonna we're gonna declare these things because He's a God of abundance. Amen. In other words, so let's. I want you to think for a moment, as I said earlier. Now I want you to think because now I want you to think. Whatever you're limiting God on, take it off this morning. Close your eyes now. This is gonna change your life. Listen, is how you believe. Jesus said, I was not welcome in my own hometown. You are standing in his hometown now, the church. Before we're going to sing, I want you to go through a minute in your mind, in your spirit. The things that you are limiting God from, let it be taken off. 
Let it be taken off this morning. And the Lord says, and after that, you're going to ask him now. Are you hearing me? You're going to ask him after that. Because that thing is going to break this morning. Are you with me, church? Every limitation are going to break this morning. Come on, you have to get in that realm. I'm pulling you in the realm. Some of you are not there yet. Get that things off you. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Take the limits off this morning. Whatever is limiting your life, take it off. 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 Assist media guys. Declare with me as you stand there, please. Come in alignment. We have to change the narrow mindsets here. We have to change this thing and the behavior. We have to change. Our cultures and our mindsets, we have to change. What the devil tells us is impossible, the Lord said it's possible. What the devil tells us is, is limited. God says, I am the limitless God. I'm taking it off this morning. Take it off this morning. Out of your life in the name of Jesus. I remove the limitations. I remove the restrictions. And I remove the boundaries now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we enter the realm of heaven. We enter the realm of heaven. And I declare that the floodgates of heaven are opening now. The floodgates of heaven are opening now. We open the floodgates of heaven and we remove the limitations. Now you start praying. Rakabamande. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Robo Shekel Rabaseke. Remove it, remove it, remove it. Shakamanda. Over your family. Over your home. Over your children. Over your marriage. Come on, young people. Come on, the next 10 minutes are changing your life now. In the name of Jesus. Shokara Baba Mande. Maraboshike. Keep praying. Shobaba Baba Baba Mande. Roboshakala Baba Mande. The Lord bless you. Keep praying, keep praying. The Lord turn His face towards you and give. Come on, sing that again. The Lord bless you this morning. Come on, come on. It's changing. The Lord bless you. Yes. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Come on, declare it this morning, hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face towards you and gave you peace. Amen. 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 Come on, we declare. Come on, we declare it is changing this morning. Children and their children 
had the children May his favor be upon you And a thousand generations And your family And your children And the children And the children May his favor His presence go before you And behind you And beside you All around you And within you He's with you He's with Come on, we declare you In the morning yeah. In the evening Come on. In your coming Come on. And your going In your weeping And rejoicing He's for you yeah. He's for you 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 Come on, we sing it in the morning, in the evening In the morning, in the evening In your coming and your going In your weeping and rejoicing He's for you, He's for you In the morning, in the evening In your coming and your going In your weeping Rejoicing is for you, he 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 is for you. We're going to sing that now. We believe that this morning. How many believe it? How many believe it this morning? Somebody say, it's changing for me this morning. Come on, say, it's changing for me this morning. Hallelujah. Now give him a praise this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to do the declaration one more in the morning. I want us to get a seat ready quickly. Because we're so under this atmosphere quickly. Get your seat, get your tired, get it ready. Those of you online, get it ready. Because we declare that the Lord will bless us. The limitations will be taken off this morning. If you need an a envelope, you can raise your hands. We've got a swipe facility at the back. You will find the QR code on the screen. Our main banking account, the feeding scheme account, and the building project account. You can sow as the Holy Spirit leads you this morning. Because we are going to come in agreement this morning. I want us to stand on our feet. Please don't sit. it in this morning but we're going to declare this in the morning and in the evening in your coming in your going come on in your weeping and your rejoicing is for you how many believe that how many believe that how many believe that come on now sing it unto him yes and you're going in your weeping rejoicing is for you He's for you Come on. in the morning, in the evening, yes. and you're coming, and you're going, and you're with Hallelujah. me, rejoicing. Yes. He's for you, 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 he's for you. I'm asking it one more time in the morning. For you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and you're going, and you weeping, and rejoicing. He's for you, 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 
is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. And I give God a mighty praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Come and say hallelujah. Come and give God a mighty praise. Say it's changing for me. Say it's turning around for me. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed by the word of the Lord, family? Are you blessed by the word of the Lord? Come on, hallelujah. Say the limits are taken off. Amen. I want to introduce you to this club while we stand on our feet. Praise God. This is going to be our annual revival club that are coming up on the 24th or the 26th of May. We are launching this revival. It's going to be TBT taking back territory. How many are excited for this upcoming revival? So we stand in agreement this morning. Amen. I want to play you this club. Look at this promo club. Amen. Hey family, I would like to invite you to our annual revival taking back territories. We have phenomenal guest speakers lined up. This is going to happen from the 24th till the 26th of May at JCJ Ministries for Hall of Park, Cape Town. We have seen in this time, God said to me, we are taking back territories this year. We have seen young people flooded into our ministry and young people's lives has radically been changed. So we believe that homes will be restored areas will be restored and communities will be restored so come and join us on the 24th 24th and 26th of may we would love to see you there god bless you coming up say things are changing hallelujah amen i want to play with this next clip and i want us to share it and um Take some people in because this is going to be our revival club that we are running from this week already. And we believe God that we are taking back territories. How many are ready? How many are ready to take back some territories? Amen. So we're going to believe God for this and we trust God for this. Let's play the revival club while we watch it. Hey Lord, help me to be a courageous believer. Come on. Help me to be a courageous believer. Come on. I'll be, this is the year that my family is coming to Jesus. This is the year that my family is coming to Jesus. I'm taking back territory. I'm taking back everything. Come on. The days of poverty are over. The days of lack are over. So if you're a child of God and you are under the blood, you're washed in the blood. The blood has gone back to your grandfather, your great grandfather, your great 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 grandfather. It's gone all the way back to Adam to break the yoke of lack, to break. Oh, there is coming a confusion in the enemy's camp. There's a ministry that is about to blow the trumpet. There is a ministry that is about to light the fire. There is a ministry that is about to pull down. Everything that looks normal shall become unnormal. Confusion in Jesus' name. 
Valhalla has not been called to be ruled by demons. Valhalla Park has not been called to rule by demonic activities. There are things that we have been settled with. There are things that we have accepted as normal. But tonight, by the power of God, we come tonight, praise God. Everything that seems normal, we come to bring interruption in the spiritual realm. There is coming an interruption tonight in the realm of the spirit. I'm walking as a new man, filled with destiny, filled with purpose, filled with the same scepter which flows in heaven. In his presence, the mountain melt like wax. The mountain melt like wax. In his presence. Who's got your ear? Because who you give your ear to is going to start having a say in your life. Come on, I'm not excited. Hallelujah. Come on, say 2024 is the year. Come on, say 2024 is the year. We're taking back there. Let's give God a mighty praise. Hallelujah. Well, the media team has done a phenomenal job on this. Come on, give the media team a hand of a round of applause. They've done a phenomenal job on this. This is going to be the club that we are sharing. The poster that we will be sharing and we'll see the club running also. Amen. I want to play one more club, but before I play that club, I just want to make clear that uh, the Cape Town Ablaze uh, Crusade are coming up on the 9th till the 21st of April. Like we know about that. So we're going to just run that promo club quickly. And then we're going to get ready for that crusade. And after that crusade, we're going to get ready for our revival. Are you ready, family? So let's run that club. Are you guys ready then? Let's just run quickly the Cape Town the Blaze Club and then we're going to end the service on that quickly. Out across Southern Africa. The devil will not have South Africa. And now the church is rising in great power and anointing with signs and wonders and miracles. South Africa belongs to Jesus. Cape Town's going to be saved. Cape Town's going to be shaken by the hand of God. I've seen an army of men and women full of the fire of God marching through the land. God is not done with this country. He's not finished with South Africa. And he's not finished with the South African people. God's not finished yet. Fire shall spread out across southern Africa. Which is in the next two weeks around about, so we're going to attend that crusade. Amen. Family, I want to bless those of you online. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back at 5 p.m. Come and give us for the online viewers, church. Uh,